But, uh, you know, definitely something I want to do. And, uh, you know, even with my grandkids, for example. Yeah, that's a great point. And that actually leads me directly into the other one of the other questions I want to ask you, which is what do you how would you um, maybe reframe your idea of progress for somebody who's older? Hmm. Uh, also, for somebody who's been at it for a long time, you know, there's that there's that lofty goal that a lot of people have of 20 pull ups or a hundred push-ups or something like that. But once you've done it for a while, those rep count goals kind of go away. And you realize it's not, that's probably not the best way to look at things. And mm. you're not gonna be able to just keep going up and up. So what would progress be for you, for somebody like me who's 56 and been at this for, I guess about 12 years or so? Yeah. For me, ultimate progress, you know, as you grow older is training long terms without injury which is it, it, it's not easy uh and you know definitely there will be times that even if you're warming up perfectly and you're doing everything the right yeah. way there will be times that you know something will snatch will uh you'll get a little injury but uh for me the the ultimate goal is training as injury free as possible and uh you know for that's like a, a starting goal uh and uh after that you know it's um I think that one reason that you, of course, you can keep adding reps, you know, the more you grow older, otherwise we'll be doing like a hundred pull-ups when we yeah. were Nobody 60, can do 70 that. years old. <laughs> uh, you know, time will take a toll on your strength, you know, hormonal uh, levels start to drop, like testosterone and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I would say it's very important to focus more on mind to muscle connection, you know, uh, and uh, that's another thing, you know, sometimes you might be improving as you grow older, you might be getting stronger and uh, you might not see the difference in terms of reps, but uh, you're getting more mind to muscle because, you know, as you grow older, I think that most people learn to leave their ego aside, learn to focus on more, uh, on form more, you know, cleaning up their form. And, uh, you know, sometimes you're increasing mind to muscle connection mm -hmm. and uh, your reps might be even going you know, lower. Yeah. So uh, keeping form clean, uh, refining your form every time, you know, focusing on basically uh, <clears throat> injury free uh, workouts and workouts that don't, uh, you know, tax your body in a, mm -hmm. and your ligaments and your joints basically in a negative yeah. way. Yeah. And that's a great point. The other thing that occurred to me when I think about these rep goals is you, you lose really your focus on form the more you're trying to get and that can mm. lead to injury. Yeah. I mean, yeah. form, proper form, actually. That's why I called my my whole program Form is Everything, because it really is. It, it can prevent injury. Mm -hmm. It not only can prevent injury, but it can improve mobility and flexibility just by doing the exercise correctly. Yeah. Anyway, I could probably talk about this forever, but I'm, one other question I want to ask you, more of a specific training type of question. We, we did a ladders workout today. You can see the... Uh, pull up the the rings in the back so we did a, a progressive kind of ladders and i wanted to ask you where you think that fits into training and why is it valuable and useful yeah so uh, i came up with this obviously i've been doing ladders for uh, a couple of years now but i came <clears throat> up with a new system the 5-2 ladder and some uh, variations of it for beginners and intermediates uh, the reason I started doing these again lately is because uh, it's been super warm here. There's been a long-term heat wave and I sort of lost my motivation to train. I love the cold. Uh, <laughs> I, I like training like in, uh, in the snow uh, with the t-shirt on and stuff like that. But uh, when it's really warm, uh, sometimes I lose my motivation. So uh, for me, it's a fun way to train when you don't have a lot of energy to do a lot of stuff. Uh, and it's also a really safe way to train because the way that you build the intensity uh, is so progressive that uh, it's a lot more friendly for your joints. Of course, you still need to do some warming up, but uh, probably a lot less than you'd have to do for like a linear uh, workout routine. Okay. Yes, the, the warm up is almost built into it. Um, and the other thing that I realized as we we're doing this is I'll tend to jump up on the pull-up bar and try to do as many reps as I can and then two more sets of that, and I'm pretty much wiped. Mm -hmm. And I'm also humbled by the number of reps I actually ended up getting, which is not very many. Mm -hmm. Whereas this approach, you're not reaching anywhere close to failure each time you go. It almost builds so that you're able to do kind of more at the end of it 
than you would have been able to do if you just started with that uh, with a set of that many reps. Yeah. It's yeah. really cool. It's kind of a synergy. Yeah. So what we did was uh, th three push-ups and one pull-up, and then we added three push-ups and one pull-up to each following set. Yeah. So we did three and one, we six did that and two. Until we, you know, get as high as you can with perfect form. Yeah. Once you can't do any more sets, rounds with uh, good form, you go back down again until you reach again like three push-ups and one pull-up. And now uh, that's the workout. Like, it was great. Short, effective, and fun. I think yeah. it's like a 15-minute workout, maybe even less. Yeah. All right. Well, I just wanted to say, Anthony, if I restore para poli. Ah, para <laughs> And uh, I, I would like to also ask you, uh, we're in a bit of a different timeline. I'm 36, you're mm -hmm. 56, Six. right? Mm -hmm. So uh, what are your best tips for training in the long run with calisthenics, you know, keeping your joints healthy and making this a lifestyle? Yeah, I, for me, it comes down to sticking with the very, very basics. Um, I always think in terms of the big three movement patterns, and that's basically the push, pull, and squat. And there's a lot of variations of all of these, but I love the really simple ones. In fact, a lot of the exercises I spend most of my time on would be considered beginner almost. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to do an elevated push-up against a wall uh, for 40 reps. Yeah. It feels great to me to do that. You get the burn mm. and you, you really can focus on the form without breaking down. So I stick with really, honestly, some push-up, some pull-up or row, and some squat. I really like body weight squats for high mm -hmm. reps. It's very difficult to do that and it forces you to to learn the movement. I'm still kind of at an intermediate level in terms of the form. Yeah. Um, and for me, another thing, and this may be a, a personality thing, but just being sort of creative with my training and feeling open to being sort of, sort of being able to do whatever I, I want to do. Mm -hmm. I'm not so big on programming and then following that uh, to the T and recording things and trying to get one more the next day mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. And then moving from one exercise to the next most difficult, which is what my book is about. It's a great way to go if you're a beginner. But now that I've been at this for long enough and I'm the age that I am, I want to wake up today and feel excited about what I'm going to do. Yeah. And it might be something totally different than I thought it might be. Yeah. And that's what keeps me going. More and of an intuitive tra intu training method. Yeah, intuitive training and kind of like be the goal being do it again tomorrow. Yeah. And yeah. As opposed to do 10 more tomorrow, just do it again and stay honest with it. So keep your sets, you know, don't just sort of, you know, phone it in, mm -hmm. do, do hard sets. Um, and good form and that's pretty much it and just talking to other people about it who are as excited as me mm, yeah <laughs> which yeah, is yeah. why we're here and you're a fan of high frequency as well right yeah i definitely do pretty much the three movement patterns every day mm. sometimes i'll switch around and i'll i'll do push push it harder you know literally yeah uh, do five sets of just push almost to failure and then pull the next day and, and so forth. I'll do that kind of a split yeah. when I need a break yeah. and kind of a mental break as much as anything else because you only really have to worry about one thing that day. Mm. But what I like most of all and I always come back to is somewhere around three sets per day of the three movements. I may do one of them in the morning, one in the afternoon, one in the evening or do them all together. Yeah. Uh, try to keep them honest, uh, two or three reps close shy of failure, mm -hmm. um, manage mm. the fatigue and do it again the next day. Yeah. Switch around your kind of your hand and foot positions too uh -huh. so you're not getting any kind of repetitive yeah. use problem. If you do chin-ups every day, you're gonna get Add some variation elbow pain for so sure. Get... So move your hands out, close grip, do some rows, do some neutral yeah. grip. Change the stimulus mm -hmm. regarding the joints connected exactly. to tissues. And, yeah. uh, I also find that the, the, the older I get, the more I find high frequency training effective. You know, training every day. Is. Uh, I feel more pain-free, uh, you know, even if I don't train for three days, we were talking about that previously, uh, I'll start feeling a bit more heavy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's also some interesting interesting research regarding that, you know, on how when you get older, your muscle memory um, cells start to decrease, the, the satellite cells. Mm -hmm. So I think that has to uh, do with it a little bit as well. Yep. But uh, yeah, maintaining that high frequency and uh, not overdoing it, of course, I think is 
is essential for staying in shape as you grow older. Yeah, and that's really what the gymnast does. And the gymnast mm. is sort of, you know, orders of magnitude above what we're doing. Um, but they wouldn't just train one exercise a day. Mm -hmm. uh, they do everything every day. Yeah. And, and I think the body adapts to that and says, okay, well, this is what I am being asked to do. Yeah. So I'm going to get better at it. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, where can people find you? Uh, Formiseverything.com. Okay. I have so, uh, a YouTube channel under my name and I'm on Instagram and uh, Facebook as well. Great. So I'll, I'll include everything below. And uh, until next time, keep on training. All okay. right.